Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial from Minecraft Bedrock. With me, only Eggnog, and today's farm, as you can see behind me, is going to be a sugar cane farm. Now, I actually am going to present two of these, one of which being this one, the other one being this massive thing. So, uh, the reason for that being, I basically just found two really nice ways to harvest sugar cane. Um, they both work up. Uh, Pretty differently, differently. Sorry, <laughs> this one's fairly easy to build, and it's also very efficient. This one is slightly harder to build. It may seem a little complicated. It, um, it does take more resources than that smaller one, but it does actually work pretty well. As you can see here, we still get tons of sugar cane from it, and it still works really well. Obviously, a lot better than this one, which is smaller. This one, though, is extendable either way. So you could extend it down this way or down that way for as long as you would like. And this is actually the one we will be starting off with building first in this video. By the way, there is actually a materials list down in the description. So if you would like to build either one of these farms, go check the description and you should see the entire materials list and yeah let's just hop right into the tutorial so to start off this farm we're gonna break seven blocks horizontally so one two three four five six seven then we're gonna break two more blocks down this way one two and then break all the blocks in the inside of that little marker that you have built exactly as i am doing then break another block down at each of these spots so you should have a seven by three by two hole, uh, seven length, three width, two height, just like that. So now what you're actually gonna wanna do is come to this very corner and you're gonna break this block and replace it with a redstone block. You can then go ahead and place a powered rail on top of that. You then wanna come over to this side of your little hole and you're gonna break these two blocks and place a powered rail right there. Then go ahead and break these four blocks, place a double chest here, and then hoppers funneling into the double chest just like that. Then just go ahead and place rails on top of those hoppers and connecting those two powered rails as well. You're also going to come down to this powered rail and break these two blocks. You could then go ahead and place your minecart with a hopper right there. And that should just stay there for the time being. Next, what you're going to do is place seven grass blocks right over here, just along here, as I have done. Uh, and then you're actually going to attempt to place a sticky piston facing downwards. And what I mean by that is kind of uh, build blocks out like that and place one there with a, a red block of redstone under it like that. You can then go ahead and break any block or replace any block that you have you know broken or placed to uh, actually get that sticky piston like that but that's how you want it right there then you go ahead and break all the blocks behind this grass and you're going to replace it all with some water now because you were only told to grab two buckets of water an easy way to make an infinite water source is when you're actually making the line uh you could place a bucket of water there one there then that will make an infinite water source. You just have to grab it from the middle and it should fill up your bucket. So yeah. Anyway, you're now just going to put place a bunch of solid blocks up on top of that water with uh, pistons all on top of those solid blocks. And then go behind and place observers on top of all those pistons facing this way. So the faces should be uh, facing the same way the piston heads are facing. Uh, or you could just look in here and see what it is because that was a really confusing way to say it. <laughs> anyway, you can now go ahead and actually place in all your sugar cane uh, just like that. And you are going to grab your glass and just surround it uh, three blocks high, just as I am doing right here. Just surround the sugar cane completely uh, with a three block high glass wall. So it should be like that. Oh, and also just add an extra layer of uh, glass because uh, sometimes the sugar cane will pop out out of the sides. And you're also just going to place a bunch of solid, solid blocks sorry, on top of all those observers as well. And also solid blocks behind all of the observers with sticky pistons facing downwards just like this. 
Now we're just going to place a bunch of redstone repeaters going into each of these blocks. So just like that. Then a bunch of redstone blocks under all of these pistons, just as shown. And the last step is to actually just place a line of redstone exactly how I have connecting to this last piston. And that should be the farm completed. Now, real quickly, I'm pretty sure you guys know how sugarcane farms work, but this one is actually a little different than one that you've seen. Uh, the way it actually works is once the sugarcane grows to the height of the observer, the observer will detect it. It will send a signal through this block to the piston, which will then push down this redstone block, which will power this repeater, which will send a signal through this block to this piston and break the sugarcane. Now, the reason why this is different and probably I'd say a lot more efficient compared to your other sugarcane farms is the fact that it breaks whatever one it's at. It doesn't send a signal that breaks all of them at once, which allows for all of them to grow three tall and be broken as soon as they do. So this little line of redstone back here is for when any of these redstone blocks come down they power the redstone which powers this piston which actually sets off that minecart and that just basically prevents you from having a minecart constantly rolling back and forth in your world it'll only go when a sugar cane is harvested to demonstrate this farm i actually turned the tick speed up to 20 so in a little bit we'll see the sugar cane grow and the farm actually work in progress uh, by the way, the all the items will go into this double chest uh, once the micro with hopper dumps them in there. Oh, and actually, you want to come behind here and break this a piece of redstone and replace it with a redstone repeater and put that on three ticks just like that. Uh, make sure that is done. And there you go. As you just saw there, as soon as one grows, grows three tall... It will be broken, and then it will be all collected by this minecart, which is pretty neat. There you go. You can see all of them coming in. Uh, my game tick speed is actually at 20, just so I could demonstrate this farm for you guys, which is why it's actually going pretty fast right now. But yeah, you could see it's actually a really efficient way of doing things. It just reduces lag with a minecart going back and forth, and it's actually really, really nice. And now we go on to the next sugarcane farm, which is absolutely mahusive, but it gets you tons of sugarcane, and the plus side is you could always extend it higher up as well. Unfortunately, uh, this length that I have going on right here is pretty much the only possible length that I could achieve, so you can't make it any longer, but you could make it higher, which is great for space, so yeah. If you're going to build this farm, uh, I recommend, highly recommend, uh, building it outside. But anyway, let's just hop into the tutorial for this monstrosity of a sugarcane farm. It may look big and a little complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. So, yeah, let's get into it. And actually, before we get into the tutorial for this farm, I would just like to note a few things. So whenever I'm using white stained glass in this farm, that is actually completely optional. You don't need glass there, but it is just nice to see this farm working and all the sugarcane being harvested and just seeing what's going on. So it's an optional choice for using a glass here. And wherever red stained glass is used when I am building this farm, that is necessary. There needs to be glass at that block. So anywhere you see red stained glass, there needs to be that. So to start this farm, you're actually going to want to dig a 15 block hole going horizontally. So just dig 15 blocks going down this way. Just one block deep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once you've gotten that down, you're going to come to the left side and you're actually going to count two blocks in and then one block out and place a double chest right at that spot. You're also going to come behind the chest, place a hopper funneling into it like that. And then just place a line of hoppers going all the way to this very last block that's uh, just funneling into each other as I have it here. You don't actually need to place one there. That, <laughs> that shouldn't have been there. But yeah, just place them going all the way down until you reach that. They should all be funneling into each other. You know that they are if their nozzle is pointing into the next one. So just to quickly test it, throw a random uh, item through and it should eventually end up in this chest. Uh, there you go. There it is. So yeah, 
Now we're going to come to the left of this chest and break these four blocks. Place a double chest here, then come behind it and place a hopper going into that double chest. Again, you can just quickly test that it is funneling through. If you place an item through and it goes into the chest. By the way, this farm doesn't have to be built in the ground as I am doing here. It could be built in the air. It just requires less blocks when building it in the ground as I am doing here. Anyway, what you're going to do now is come all the way down to, to this end where the very first hopper here is. You're going to break this block in your little hole and replace it with a redstone block. Then you're going to place a powered rail on top of that with rails going all the way down this line like this. Place a powered rail on top of that um, hopper and another rail right there which you could also break. You also might want to just go ahead and place a solid block right there as well. And feel free to put in your minecart with hopper. You don't necessarily need it right now, but it's just nice to have right there. And I know I said white stained glass would be optional use of actual glass, but I'm just placing it here because it looks nice. But this actually has to be glass above the chest or else you won't actually be able to access the chest, which is actually pretty important because you need to access that. You also might want to dig around the chest. Uh, and maybe, you know, I don't know, build a nice little, <laughs> nice little staircase, uh, to get to it as well. Uh, just so it's easy, easily accessible. Now we're going to just place 11 blocks going to the right of this double chest. Um, and when you place all those, it should just end off at this hopper. Then you're going to come behind the hoppers, or I guess to the side of them, because <laughs> I don't know, they're facing that way. Anyway, you're going to come over these rails, I guess is a better way to say. You're just going to place grass blocks going over them like that and my mistake you actually don't need these three items right there and you could place a solid block there instead and now we're going to come over back down to this end place a solid block there and a piece of glass right there and now you're just gonna make a quick temporary unlimited water source you could just do exactly what i did there and you're actually going to go ahead and waterlog every single one of these hoppers going all the way down here. And that's going to cause a leak, so just place a solid block there as well. This will just allow you to place all the sugarcane, which is actually your next step. Place sugarcane on all those pieces of grass, just as I have there. Uh, I don't know why that works. Uh, it's a little, little weird, but you know, it works. Don't argue with it. It's completely fine. I could have totally put it back here. It's just a lot a lot cooler to do this. <laughs> you know, why not? Anyway, now just place a block going off the sugar cane like that. And keep placing blocks until you reach the very last piece of sugar cane. Then you're going to place pistons on top of each and every single one of those blocks. Then come behind and place observers on top of every one of those pistons just like that. And now we're going to place blocks behind each of these pistons and you're gonna actually grab your redstone and place it all here like that to know that you've done that correctly it just quickly placed sugar cane going up there and it should harvest it just like that and look at that it went into this chest how neat and what you're now actually gonna do is place three more blocks out here so one two three kind of like an l shape just as i have done there then you're gonna place Two pieces of redstone here and grab your repeater and place it right there. Uh, have that repeater going into a block uh, with a sticky piston uh, right under that block if you could get it. I don't know why I can't get in the hole. That's not right. That's not right either. That's not right. Let's try it from a different angle. <laughs> hey there we go and once you've done that you're gonna place a block of redstone on that sticky piston as well. Now, this is basically exactly what we have on the smaller version. Uh, as soon as it is all harvested, it'll send this minecart over, which will then go and come back. This just ultimately reduces lag with the minecart going back and forth. Uh, so yeah, it's just, it's just better that way. So don't argue it. And also before I forget, I put this on four ticks. Yeah, four ticks. Put it on four ticks. Basically make sure the other uh, little stick the other torch is all the way at the end uh this way it actually powers this rail enough for the minecart to go and again to quickly make sure this is actually properly working and just place two pieces of sugarcane it should be harvested minecart should be sent uh and then it should come back and just stop right there as well there you go that was perfect uh and the reason for that minecart hopper being there is because 
on this bottom layer, a few pieces of sugarcane will end up on this grass and not be collected by these hoppers. So that minecart hopper is just there to collect it all from under the grass and bring it into this chest. It doesn't happen very often, so I guess you don't really need a double chest there, but it's still just nice to have. Also, if you come back here, you don't really need to cover this up, but if you want to, you could, but again, you don't have to, so uh, don't feel like you have to. And So now we're going to actually add three layers of glass completely surrounding it on top of this double chest as well. Just completely surrounding it like this all the way around. So once you've done it just like this, you could actually call it a day and just, you know, place half slab, a half slab roof on top of this. But if you're watching to this point, then you probably want to build the bigger version. And this is basically just the same version as that, but uses more materials. So um, instead of doing that, what you're actually going to do is place grass right there and all the way down to the end just like that you're also going to come back here place a block there with blocks on top of all this redstone as well basically just around the top of these observers just as i have there and then fill that entire thing in with water again you can do that unlimited water source thing i showed you you don't really need this one anymore as you could just use the ones that are that you will be creating in here. You could also actually uh, just build this a layer higher as well. Just build this glass a layer higher. And then come in here and place all your sugar cane on that grass. And a block behind the sugar cane and above all this water as well. And then you're going to place pistons going all the way down with actually another set of pistons on top of those pistons. Now, again, you're going to just layer the, this glass up three more blocks, or I guess four more, really. Uh, so layer it up all the way around four more blocks, just as you did on the bottom. Now we're going to come back behind here, place three solid blocks going out, and then place one on top of there, and then break that bottom one. Uh, then you can go ahead and place three pieces of redstone dust there with a piece of glass right there. Again, because I am using redstone glass, that means there is, there does have to be glass there. It is mandatory. It's not an option. You do absolutely need glass in that spot. Anyway, you're going to place another piece of redstone dust there with two blocks out here, a block there, and then you could go ahead and break this block then place a redstone repeater going into that block and blocks behind this first row of pistons. You could actually place redstone dust on top of all of those blocks. It's also really important to place a piece of redstone dust on that block as well. Now this should make it so whenever this bottom row is powered, this sends a signal to the top row and all those pistons are extended as well. To quickly test it, you could break through this glass a little and Again, play sugarcane. As you saw there, it set off the top row as well. Here you can see it a better view. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Now, assuming that you want to build a third layer up, you're going to place grass going all along here. Uh, basically, same thing you did on the bottom and just surround these pistons with a bunch of blocks. Then you're going to come in here and place water on all these blocks. Uh, that's actually not good. I wasn't supposed to do that. But make sure you don't waterlog any of the pistons. That'll actually uh, break a lot of stuff if you waterlog those pistons. So really make sure you don't because then the water will ruin the redstone and actually break some of the crops. And I'm not going to show you how to build this entire third layer because you've already done that here. You literally just copy this. Don't get to the redstone yet. It's a little bit wonky compared to how it is here. I'll show you guys that once I have this down and once you have this down. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So once you have this entire third row completed as I have uh, for the redstone, you're just going to come down here. It's actually not that, um, not that difficult, but it's just a little wonky. So you're going to come down here, place a block on top of that repeater, and then place two more blocks on top of that as shown, and then two more blocks off the side just like that with a piece of glass there. You could go ahead and break these two blocks and place redstone dust on top of all of these. Then place two blocks here with a third block on top of the second one. Break this block and take your um, repeaters, place one there, 
and a line of blocks behind the first row of Sticky Pistons with Redstone Dust on top of all those blocks. And that's how it should be. Now, again, if you want to test to make sure that this does actually work, just place two pieces of sugarcane. It should all go off. And now once you've done that, you could actually go ahead and build up the 4th and 5th or 6th or, you know, however many layers you are doing. And if you're not quite sure how to do the redstone for that, don't worry. I will show you guys in just a second once I have gotten to uh, the 5th layer down. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So once you've gotten to your top layer, you're actually just going to want to quickly slab off the roof. Uh, this is just so for whatever reason no mobs get in or anything weird like that because you never know that could happen so if you were not quite sure how to do the redstone basically place a block on top of the repeater with two blocks to the left of it a block on top of the last one and then break this block uh then you want a block here with a piece of glass there and just place a redstone here as i have done Two blocks off of that glass with one there, break this block, place a redstone repeater going into that block, and then blocks behind all of these pistons with redstone dust on top of all of those blocks. And yeah, that's basically the exact same thing for the next layer. So block there, here, there, redstone dust here. Two blocks, repeater, blocks behind, redstone dust, not on top of there though, but back here. And once you've finished all that redstone, that is actually your farm completed. The real, like, probably big next step is literally to just come inside of here and actually just uh, dot some glowstone around uh, back here. This glowstone here is just so your crops actually grow in the nighttime, which, you know, is quite important, I'd say so. Because uh, you don't actually want this farm's rates to decrease because you didn't put light sources in. You can really put this glowstone anywhere you want, or whatever light source you're using. It really does not matter. Uh, as long as it lights up basically the entire thing and allows for all the crops to grow during the nighttime. Now, that is actually your sugarcane farm completed. It's really big, and the way it works is whenever any of these bottom few pieces of sugarcane grow, it sends a signal, the observer detects it, which sends a signal uh, and harvests all of it, but a lot of stuff happens here as well. When it harvests it, it sends this minecart through, which picks up any stragglers that are still on the dirt. And it also sends a bunch of signals to each of these layers harvesting the sugarcane there as well. So it is actually really efficient. It's also really satisfying to watch when it actually works. Oh, also a very important step is to come over here and replace that uh, redstone dust with a uh, repeater. Uh, that'll just allow the signal to actually reach all the way up here. The tick speed has actually been changed to 30 now. Just so it all goes just a little bit faster. And there, as you were able to see, as soon as one grew on the bottom, they all went. And that's, it's actually really satisfying to watch. Uh, as you saw there, that minecart went and then came back. And all the drops will be collected into here. Whatever the minecart picked up will go into here. Uh, it's actually very rare for things to get stuck on that grass, but... Every time they do, it will get picked up here. So it's actually really, really nice how this thing works. It's super cool. It's actually really satisfying to watch, as you guys saw there. And it works really, really well. It actually gives you tons of sugarcane each harvest, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, and yeah, it's just really cool seeing this thing run. That is actually just super satisfying to watch. But yeah, as you can see, this farm just works really well, and oh, look at that, we actually got a little straggler. One straggler, there's usually more than that, that's actually really surprising. There's usually, like, at least four that comes through there, but you know what, I'm not gonna argue with that. Uh, we have tons in here, but we did have the game speed at 30, uh, the game tick speed, so, I mean, it doesn't really count, but anyway, that would conclude today's video to taste today's tutorial video uh, i can't speak 
And I hope you guys tried out, if not both of them, at least one of them. Let me know down in the comments which one you tried and uh, if you like it or not. And if you actually tried both, which one do you prefer and think is actually a lot more efficient? Obviously, this bigger one is a lot more efficient. But, I mean, like, you know, just, like, which, which one's a lot better, I guess. I don't know. Just <laughs> let me know a bunch of stuff down in the comments if you would like. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and actually tried out the farm, and I hope to see you guys in my next video.